And uh, I would like to make potato kernishes. <laughs> would you like to make potato kernishes? There's the magic and the mystery behind potato kernishes. And uh, welcome to a. S would you like to pick some cotton with me? <laughs> welcome to a new Stephen King review. Well, not new. Another Stephen King review. Gadavia yep. shift. This is made in 1990, in 1990, it's rated R, with a rating of 4.9 out of 10, seems fair. And it has one good actor in it, Brad Dorif. In a very old textile mill with a serious rat infestation, deadly accidents start happening. But the corrupt foreman continues to put his workers in danger until they discover a horrifying secret deep in the basement. Is it textile or is it just cotton? Textile. Just the machine, the main machine we see is a cotton machine, cotton picket machine. Yeah, it's a, it's a cotton miller. Now, um, I mean, like, yet yeah, this does there. The stars a few actors we've seen before, mainly Brad Dorf, uh -huh. but another one as mill worker, just as a guy called mill worker is Richard France, who you may remember as the iPad the the irate eye patch man from Dawn of the Dead. The, that guy? Yeah, the guy who's like. Who is being interviewed on the news thing, and it's like, we have to take a cold intellect, intelligent response to this. This is no longer safe. This is no longer safe. We have to shoot people who are bitten. That guy. Yeah. That, that's He's oh, just in this okay. movie as, as a middle worker. Well, I'm sure there's like a bunch of other actors that went on to do other things. Mm -hmm. Like, from this. But I mean, like, it should have had a... Uh... Like it should have had like Red Brown as uh, as the main guy Hall. Now Stephen Mucked was all he plays a uh, Warwick. He was also in Monster Squad. As Sean's dad. Oh, well, there you dad. go. Exactly. He was a, he was Sean's dad. Did he do? He did this first though, right? No, he did that. This was the nineties. Uh, okay. That was the eighties. Right. Okay. No. Yeah, that's true. Monster Squad was like way earlier. Monster okay. Squad's a fantastic movie. Yeah, it's a good one. Now. This movie is part of a collection I call uh, the Night Shift Collection, because they're all based on stories from Night Shift, which includes okay. that we've reviewed, The Mangler, and hmm. The Lawnmower Man. Really, The Lawnmower Man's part of that? Mm -hmm. Well, the movie, the movie isn't. It's not. It's barely based on anything. But <laughs> Other short, yeah, other like, short stories in uh, short story. Night Shift that have had film adaptations are sometimes they come back. Okay. Um, trucks, which got maximum overdrive, and Children of the mm. Corn. Well, that uh, that's probably the most famous of them. That has a hundred sequels, and Stephen King doesn't know why. <laughs> and I haven't seen a single one of those sequels. No one has, because why would you? Hey, I have all of them, though. I, like, actually have all of those fucking movies. I should watch them. We're going to on the show. Yeah, but, I mean, like, before we get to them on the show, I don't know. I might just want to, like, watch it. Yeah, least fair enough. Them. Anyway, without further ado, Graveyard Shift. The Graveyard. Go, go have a shift in the Graveyard. Stephen King invites you to venture deep inside the caverns below the old Bachman Mill. You're not thinking about going down in there. Where a secret lies long forgotten by any living soul. Just ain't no job worth this. The workers suspected. You can't put me down there. You can't put anybody down there. I know things. The owner denies it. What did happen to the fellow that started this job? 
It didn't work out. And everyone fears it. This place is here infested. That might be the understatement of the year. They're broken. Because one by one, it will devour them all. We're like shrimp in an all-you-can-eat salad bar, and that thing ain't stopping till it's full. Oh, Must be some other way out of here. Yeah! It's full! This isn't real. This is the new horror from the mind of Stephen King. <laughs> Graveyard Shift. Good benefits. Early retirement. Okay, we disagree on this, Gio, but I think that ending song is a freaking banger. I love it. It's just like it, okay, honestly, it, it reminds me of like uh, the the rogue uh, the rogue warrior fucking like credit song. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the the rap that they made out of uh, out of uh, uh, Mickey Rourke's fucking doesn't, voice clips. <laughs> it doesn't mention your fucking nearly enough. Happy fucking birthday. <laughs> My favorite was the um, super not super best friends. Uh, it's just bad. The re-res guys they they reviewed that game for it's just bad, and uh-huh. that they they played that song having to bleep out every curse word with goat noises, <laughs> but they bleep it out with goat noises, and it's the funniest thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> wow! So it's like it's like goat meh. <laughs> Instead of goat. Happy, fucker. happy birthday, yeah, goat meh. meh. Happy, happy so, birthday. <laughs> we begin this movie with a crazy with a guy doing his job at the textile mill and talking to rats. Uh-huh. He's just chilling, talking to the rats. He's named a rat. Rat pees on the chair, and then I think the rats push him into the cotton picking machine, and he dies. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a, oh, you're still there for me, huh, Dolores? Like you're you're never gonna leave me alone, right? Pisses on the chair, and he's like, ah, oh, you're no lady. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why the rats killed this guy since he's clearly chill with them. Well, I mean, like they're they're all kind of like looking at him because like he's he's like he's trying to make example of like one of the other rats. He's like, class is in session. Did every anyone forget their homework? Because they're all like you know just like staring. And he just grabs one. He's like, okay, well you know what happens. Drops one in the milling machine. Uh, ah, yeah, it's fair. like, oh, I guess I'm gonna have to make another example. Fair Tosses enough. another one in there. He's, and then um, and then the 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 king rat gets pissed. He's um. Well, I kind of feel for the foreman in this movie if his workers are this idiotic and playing with rats instead of doing their job. Well, I mean, every now and again, you gotta take a break, man. Like, you're you're not uh, you're not you're not picking the cotton; you're just milling it. Mm. You're not you're not you're not doing slave labor here. So, he he dies horribly. So the mill's hiring a new person. Mm-hmm. And uh, it turns out to be a drifter uh, by the name of Hill. Or Hall. Hall. Yeah. John Hall. Hall. John Hall. John Hall. Yeah. John Hall and John... And, and, and John, what's his name from the last movie? Yeah, John... What's his name? Riley? Yeah, John Riley. John Riley there. But got a, got a hand, like... Hall, or as you'll know, mostly know him if you've read the short story, College mm-hmm. Boy. Yeah. Because Warwick, the, the foreman, in, insists on referring to him exclusively as College Boy. Because because he probably didn't go to college himself, Mr. Warwick didn't. Yeah, but he's a foreman, so it doesn't matter. He already has a good job. <laughs> but, I mean, he's, he's really, really, like, fucking... Like, uneducated then, I mean, like, as he's just, like, fucking, oh, I graduated the high school, blah, 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 whatever. Like, I was just gonna run this mill and not have any fucking feeling about any kind of math or whatnot. I'm gonna run this place with, uh, with no math. I mean, I don't know why he's acting like he owns and runs the mill when he's just the foreman. <laughs> Like, well, I mean, foreman's the foreman doesn't own the the business. The foreman ye- is a worker who yells at other workers until they work. <laughs> he does a lot of that, though. Anyway, 
He looks like a dollar store Clancy Brown. Yeah, he kind of does. He also looks like uh, he also looks like a uh, Punisher dude from uh, John Bernthal dude from Walking Dead. Yeah, he does kind of look like John Bernthal. You know also. what? I see it. I, I so see yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Stephen mocked. It's like, yeah, he's uh, he's pretty good. He's uh, he's not a bad actor. It's just I was a little bit taken aback by his his accent because it's a it's a weird one. And it fluctuates like, sure exactly between like Eastern European and Maine. Yeah, which is why I'm like I don't, I don't know what he's kind of going for with this one, but I mean like yeah, sure, your 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 southern your southern asshole foreman guy mm. at a at a cotton factory in it's Maine. Like, okay. Yeah, exactly. Like in Maine because this is Stephen King. It's like you can you can sound a bit more like it. You 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 you're kind of you're kind of like you're not hamming it up enough even. Like I'd say Mm. He's mixing too much, mix accent. But uh, yeah, so uh, Hall gets gets hired on uh, to to run the mill upstairs. But he's like, it gets really really hot, so we only run that sucker through the night. Uh, that means uh, eleven to what was it, eleven to seven? Yeah. Yeah. And he's good. And of course, this is the titular the the name drop the the graveyard shift. But we also meet the single best character in the movie uh, around uh-huh. this time, who is the exterminator, who is mm-hmm. an insane man, played by the insane man, Brad Dorif. And he <laughs> yeah. he has the best extermination tactic ever, because he, like, pumps rats out. Yeah, <laughs> with flush them out of the basement. Yeah, flush them out of the basement with a hose and into the river. I'm very disappointed in this movie because I thought he was Hall. That when I saw stuff uh, in the movie, I thought yeah. Brad Dorif was Hall, and that would have worked much better. No, I like him better as the uh, as the exterminator because like he has just like no filter at all with that role. Like uh, if he was playing the main hero, like the if he was playing yeah like the main actor in this. Like he would, he would have to kind of tone it down a lot more. He would have to be like a lot more heroy, which he's not. I mean, he's fucking Chucky. He's warm tongue. Yeah, exactly. Like he's he's not the guy. Like you don't get you don't get Brad Dorif to play the good guy. No. Like you can get him to play a good guy doll. <laughs> but you can't get him to be the good guy. <laughs> Funny. Thanks. <laughs> But uh, yeah, he's uh, he's really good actually. Like he's he's a great character in this movie. Like his fucking all of his lines are fucking like they 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 actually like hit home and like they're realistic types of things that like this type of dude would be saying, especially given his backstory. He's like he's apparently you supposed know, to be like a nom. In survivor. nom, they take one of our boys and stake him down, arms tied out. Then they make a yep. slit in his belly. Black like Jesus. And then they, they get a hungry rat and put him in the body and they'd eat his way through. If he didn't wasn't hungry enough to put a burning rice bowl. You want do you want some mm-hmm. burning rice in the bowl? These rats did <laughs> I was gonna fucking say that. <laughs> These rats sure did. <laughs> and they eat it. I've the... actually heard of this torture uh method like a bunch of times in other things. Oh yeah. I forget where. I I've, I've heard it in the untouchables actually. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay, but yeah, and, and actually, like, it's a really good metaphor. Like, because if you think about it, like, uh, you can think about it as like the whole factory as the rice bowl, yeah, and like all the people that are inside of it later going deeper into the factory. So there's a lot of to, to get there's out. There's a lot of, of employees. Uh, they're all pretty much assholes. Mm-hmm. Everyone keeps harassing. Uh, um. To Hall when he oh. just wants to do his job and eat his lunch. Except for uh, Wisconsin, who sh- totally just wants to bone down. Yeah, Je- uh, Jen is cool. She's, uh, she's, she's the good one. Mm. She's like one of the only good characters, with the exception of the the exterminator. So, well, honestly, the exterminator is even chill with him, too. Like, he oh. actually, like, pals around with him quite a bit. Especially after he sees him nail a fucking rat with a can. Yeah, that's something he, what he does for fun. Is he, he uses a slingshot to shoot cans at rats. Mm-hmm. The, um... A bunch of people are chosen... Oh, there is a... 
there's one woman because he he's the foreman's assigning people or asking people if they want to do the cleanup crew for the basement. Uh huh. Yeah. And he assigns one woman to the cleanup crew who apparently he's been sleeping with, and she just goes insane on his car with a fire axe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what was her name? Fuck, I have it over here somewhere. Hang on, I'm looking for it. Uh, ba 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 ba. Shit, where was it? I know I wrote it somewhere here. Uh, I'm gonna get it. Hang on, I got this. I have this fucking written somewhere. Nordello. Okay, Elona Margolis. Yeah. Yeah, she plays. Uh, she plays Nardello. Nice. Uh, I don't know her first name, but yeah, her last name is Nardello. She, her only name is Nardello. Yeah, exactly. She's just named as Nardello. Mm. Uh, so yeah, uh, she's like she goes fucking ape shit on uh, on Warwick's car because she fucking he scheduled her for basement cleanup because like he he can't he wants to oh you know you know what her, uh, give her. You know Brad Dourif's first uh, credited role was? Uh-huh. He was in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Yeah? Yeah. Where he's, where he's screaming like a fucking madman. Yeah, because he is. <laughs> it's a great role for him. <laughs> well, it was a great movie. It's a good role for Jack Nicholson also. Especially when you realize that Jack Nicholson's totally the bad guy in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Oh yeah, he is. Because, totally like, face is. it, he could, he is pretending to be crazy to not have to go to prison. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that has Danny DeVito in it too, and he's fantastic. Yeah, technically you can think of uh, Leonardo DiCaprio also as, like, the villain in Shutter Island. Mm. You can kind of think about it that way too. And in Titanic. Yeah. No, the the iceberg is the villain. True. And possibly <laughs> the iceberg is nothing. Dio. <laughs> also, Billy Zane is the bad guy in that because you needed a bad guy in Titanic, I guess. <laughs> oh yeah, Billy Billy Zane is Dio. There we go. Billy That's Zane I... is Dio, and the iceberg is the world. Geo, <laughs> stop for a second and realize that you just created what? perfect. Ca- you just created perfect casting. Yes, I have. <laughs> now you use Billy Zane as Dio Brando. It'd be fucking perfect. So. I can totally imagine him screaming, What are you wearing the fucking outfit? So, they they bumble around, we get character stuff, we hear about rats. Um, Brad Dorf, the exterminator, is sent to the graveyard. Like an actual mm-hmm. graveyard. <laughs> they, they have the title graveyard shift okay so of course someone has to be sent to the graveyard and to do a shift it's this weird graveyard it's like right beside the mill and it's some yeah Louis- and it's like all flooded and old it's a louisiana swamp graveyard <laughs> basically and yeah you're looking at this like this looks like not even like not a real pl- not even from a movie but like the base for like a Universal mm. Pictures monster model, like the base for a model kit. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like, like it's it's kind of like it's like where you would send like a D and D party. It, it's where you it would be the base where you would put like the Wolf Man or something. After or like if the you model. don't want to have yeah, like if you don't want to have your your party go near the an actual like lake or ocean. Because and they want to send like a, a water refused, monster after them. Because they refuse to. Because they know what you're up to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you send them to the flooded the uh, the flooded cemetery instead, and they'll meet a fucking like octopus or like so a fucking. You're expecting you're expecting to see Simon Belmont lizard man going going the other way in this place. Yeah, pretty much. Pun- like, pun- and like punch the rat, and the pork chop comes out, so he eats it. <laughs> it's such a set. It's amazing. So Brad Dorf goes down there and manages to, in the rat movie, get his head crushed with a coffin. <laughs> yes. It's a pretty badass way to go, though. True. Like, don't get me wrong. And, like, also, like, he knows that what's coming also, which is kind of what makes it a little bit funnier, is, like, 
oh yeah, like go get go get him, doggy. He's got like his uh, his dog yeah, like run rat after terrier. fucking. Yeah, exactly. Go get the rat terrier. Like, uh, sends us a rat terrier after the fucking the rats in the uh, cemetery. Ain't no job worth this. And then uh, ain't no dog. Yeah, exactly. Worth he hears this. like the squeal from the dog. Yeah, exactly. He's like, ain't no, ain't no job worth this. Ain't no dog neither. But no, that's not he, true. Yeah, the rat terrier is a good boy. But yeah, he he is dead. He's he's very killed. Oh yeah, Brad Dorf is is very much kill. But I mean, don't worry, he'll be back. He just transferred his body into a good guy doll. Give me the power, I beg of you. There you go. So, Jambala. <laughs> so, <laughs> they um, they eventually like actually do the cleanup, and they're um. Yeah, they get started on the cleanup thing, and they find a roll top desk full of rats so they call brogan which i heard is rogan and i totally buy this guy being joe rogan because he's an insane idiot <laughs> and he just also also he fucking he has this hose right and to like to spray to spray down the basement right but he's using it to spray fucking rats mostly and, and every time he does it he's screaming like fucking red brown and like he's screaming and spraying everything including the black guy with a hose yeah. And it's just... Oh, yeah, also, yeah, there was that there's, black guy we There's we an didn't insult mention. in Canada, which uh-huh. just fits so perfectly, because he's a hoser. Yeah, he <laughs> this is guy, a hoser. This guy is a hoser. Yeah, you're a real hoser, eh? Oh, look at that hoser over there, then. <laughs> that damn dare hoser over there. Hey, you Brogan, know, you're... He, he works at the cotton mill. <laughs> hey, Brogan, you're a cotton-picking hoser. Yeah, a real cotton picking hoser out there. So they find a trap. <laughs> there, Rogan. They find a trap door. Uh huh. In the in the basement, and they go down the trap door. Mm-hmm. And then they all just start getting eaten by a giant bat rat. Because <laughs> the, the the bat that, rat that's pretty abrupt. The bat rat does have some pretty cool kills. Like he has like it, it has the wing strangulation on one person. Like some of it's like. Yeah, it's it's a cool it's a cool monster for mm. sure. Don't get me wrong; it's a big fucking mutated bat rat. It's voiced right, by Frank it looks Welker. Fucking metal. It's Frank Welker too. Oh, cool. Of course, who else would make those noises? <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, fucking animals. <laughs> and, and I don't mean Chris Chan will will pleasure in themselves. <laughs> Chris Chan. <laughs> then again, Chris Chan is just an animal. So I mean, you got that one. <laughs> No, uh, animals aren't evil. So Christian some, is some can't can be, be. No, they they don't have morals. It's arguable. It's arguable that spiders are evil. Spiders come from outer space. Because all they do is just eat. They do come yeah, from know, space. Yeah, but like all spiders do is eat. Mm. It's like that's all they do. Also, fl- uh, like mosquitoes and flies. Yes. Like, all they do is spread disease and eat. So, they go down and they get picked off by rats one by one until um, uh-huh. John uh, Hall and Wisconsky find this freaking Dark Souls boss room. <laughs> it's just Royal Rat Authority, dude. <laughs> and um, while this is happening, Warwick has lost his mind. Yes. And yes, he fucking has. He straight up goes full fucking army face paint. He becomes Frank Castle. Like this is especially where I see him becoming fucking uh, John uh, John Bullenthal. His is like he just fucking he goes full fucking Punisher. His whole he, he just fucking he puts the war fa- his he whole crew a knife. his whole crew gets killed. And he yeah. he falls down. He gets jumped by the rat and falls down a, a plot a, a trap door. Like a, a board breaks and he falls into a pit of bones, and then he's going after Hall with a ha- with just a hammer. Well, uh, John waits. Tom waits. Hell broke loose. Is playing. <laughs> yeah. It, it might as well fucking be, dude. Like that. That's how fucking like serious this fucking gets. He manages to kill Wisconski with a knife. Yeah. And then it's kind of sad, actually. It is very sad. Then he and John fight. He and Hall, they fight, and then Hall, like, pushes him into the big rat who killed, who, like, impales him with his, like, scorpion stinger 
furry thing. It ha- I don't know what it... It has this, like, s- articulated spike that comes out of its back. Like, the Violator, almost. It's yeah, it's, it's a cool-ass monster, but, like, it's it's got, like, yeah, like, a lot of, like, spikes and, like, claws and shit on it. I like it we never see it. can't really understand it. its anatomy. I like that, though. We it never, has, like, wings and we shit. We never see it completely, and that works for me. Yeah, exactly. It's fine. Like, you don't know how big exactly it is, you know? It could be fucking, like, long. It could have, like, a fucking, a weird, like, fucking centipede tail on it. Like, fucking, uh, like, the weird bat thing from fucking Resident Evil 5. True. Like, it could literally be the fucking Resi 5, like, bat monster. So, the, so he, 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 but now it's just Hall and this rat monster. And obviously he doesn't want to fight the rat, mon- rat monster, so he books it. Up and up uh-huh. and up and back into the mill in the room with the cotton picker. But it's full of rats uh-huh. just looking at him. So he uh-huh. tr- he gets the rat's tail into the cotton picker and then starts it up and kills the rat. Yeah, and he, he shoots the can at it to kind of like give it re- reason for me, him to be like practicing with no, the can. He, the the, yeah, he shoots the can to start up the, the picker. Yeah, exactly. And he's like, uh, I forget what he says exactly. Let's look. Like, uh, it's it's some variant of "Smile, you son of a bitch." Pretty that, much. That's that's exactly. the. <laughs> they're all variations on that one line. Yeah, but like he he runs it through the miller, and then uh, the, yeah, he just kind of like that's that's kind of the end of the movie. Honestly, yeah. And then like, we get it the, doesn't really have anything else aside from that. Like just all the rats feast the on the cotton gosh. after. Yeah, the the bloody yeah. uh, the bloody cotton soaked through with the, the rat king. cotton. Soaked through with yep. little King John. <laughs> <laughs> the royal rat authority then feasts <laughs> upon upon the the giant king rat. And then that's the movie. We get a cool song, and that's the end. What do you think of it? Uh, well, I mean, if you want uh, a lord of, uh, of of rat kind, you're not going to find any better than uh, a, a bat. Because hmm. I mean, like a, a bat is just is just a flying rat. It's just a cooler it's just a rat. rat with wings. It's just a cooler rat. Yeah, exactly. It's just a cooler rat that sucks blood. Because a man, like, I mean, like, think this of it, is a mutated version. If you have so. Batman, it's a Batman. If you have Rat Man, it's the Rat Man will give you. Exactly. <laughs> but I mean, I wouldn't want to challenge this rat to to Tekken. I could kick. I wouldn't want to fight this rat in Tekken. No, it could probably just stab you. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Like you do like one fucking combo on it, and it just fucking turns around and goes like, ah, and just fucking stabs you through the goddamn chest, fucking donuts your ass, and then you won't be playing any more Tekken. You won't be doing any more rounds. You'll never but break the, top eight then. The, the the big rat is dead, and then a smaller rat comes up and says, "The big rat is dead. I, smaller rat, am the new leader of the Decepticons." <laughs> there you go. Ah, another Transformers reference. It's Rat Bat. <laughs> it kind of is, yeah. I honestly like. Okay, I'm gonna talk score right here. I'm I'm not sure. Okay, what this movie gets exactly, but I rated it as anywhere between a three and a seven out of ten. And you say that I should probably just straight on give it a five because it's between a three like and a seven. Might. Yeah, but I mean, I feel like it deserves less because of its inaccuracy. I'm and just going also because, to like at worst, it's a three. I'm just gonna match the IMDb score and give it a four point nine. Four point nine. Yeah, I might give it a four point five. Fair I'll enough. give it a four point five. Sure, that seems uh, that seems fair. A- anyway, I next mean, it's week. A good, it's a good movie, but all it is at the end of the day is like Royal Rat Authority with fucking Brad Dorif. And next like, week it also it kind of reminds me of a couple of other movies though next it's like, week it's like a mix of like royal rat authority can I, can i just get through this yeah, for a yeah, second? yeah of course okay it like it reminds me of like yeah like royal rat authority um atlantis and, like wait atlantis uh, the, the the disney movie it, yeah, because, like, right. you look at, like, Milo Packard as, like, Mr. Hall, and then you have, like, Warwick as, okay. like, the, the colonel there. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I, no that works. Yeah, really and then well. you have, like, Jenny being, like, the girl from the engine room or whatever. Hmm. It's like, it, it kind of works. Then we, but it's we, like, it's a mishmash of a bunch of different things. Okay, we, it's, it's an okay movie. We though. need, if they make a live-action version of that, Danny DeVito has to play Mole. As who? 
de- uh, uh, you have disturbed the dirt. Oh yeah, he has to be the mole. Yeah, he has to be mole man, for sure. Keith David <laughs> as uh, as as Cookie. Yeah, for sure. No, for as sure. Sweetie. Who's the Who's the doctor? Mr. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Sweet. Uh, Mr. Sweet. Christopher Lloyd. God, I saw crazy. that movie so fucking long ago, and I still remember it like so Christopher fucking Lloyd long as the... I haven't watched it pretty much since. Ryan Reynolds as the explosive expert. That'd be pretty cool too. Yeah. I don't dispute. Ooh. Busted his way out of a Turkish prison. <laughs> also, what's his name? Um, Tom Holland as Milo. Yeah, Tom Tom Holland would make a good Milo. He'd make a better Milo than he would a fucking Nathan Drake. Yeah, uh, I'm legitimately happy that Monster Hunter didn't make its budget back because screw Paul W. S. <laughs> Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you, Paul W.S. Anderson. No one wants to watch Mila Jogovic, your fucking wife's ass anymore in black spandex and fucking doing the same old, same old. Well, not with a whole movie attached to it, no. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, next week we're going to have a combination of two cool things, Fallout Apocalypse and Pro Wrestlers. Well, that sounds fucking badass. So until then, up Merrick Tomato. And I'm wondering why the hell we didn't watch that this week. Because we had to watch this this week. <laughs> oh yeah, right. <laughs> See you next time. Okay, bye guys. Don't get your blood sucked by a bunch of rat bats. Or at least do your best. Ciao. Bye.